Absolutely. Out there in Florida taking in some of their sun. Shoot, I wish I'd have been out there, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> What's good, Lee? What's going on? What's up, guys? What's going on? Well, yeah, it's the man having the show this weekend down at Rebel. Um, so what's going on, man? Let it talk to us about the show this weekend, man. I'm over here in Florida. They got they're all disorganized here. We're trying to get into the dinner. They got a hundred people waiting out front, like it's Caravana trying to get in the door. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're like, come on, man. You want me to work this door? <laughs> Lisa, you want me to work the door? Like for real. Before I'll shuffle that, these people in and come out with a couple thousand in my pocket. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, real try to hustle come out. They don't know. <laughs> Listen, man. What's up, guys? Why yeah. you did? Talk to us about how the how the convention. Let us know where you at. Yeah. What's going on? What you're doing? No, listen, it was good, man. I was down here, and uh, it was nice to see a familiar face. Dan from Three Lions is down here, too. So two people are petitioning. Um, we, there was a couple other people from the commission side, uh, some of the officials. But um, ultimately, it's, it's, it's nice that you're not a lone ranger down here, that there's a couple people that were actually trying to put us on the map, fighting for ratings, fighting for our fighters. So I, it, it, it was really motivating to see that another one of my guys was down here. That's amazing. What is the overall energy um, of, of the entire event, but also of, you know, the world when it comes to Canadian boxing? Listen, man, I think that many times we have been put in a position where um, we take fights because we don't have much of another choice and i think we the main goal here is to get us in the position where we take the fights by choice and that we do have the right um the right momentum behind us and 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 the right circumstances we're not just taking because we have to because we need to and we want to and it will position these guys in a better better spot so um it just was, you can see the progression. You guys are not here, but when you're here, you can see the progression. Okay, so like they're actually taking a look at our fighters a bit more? Well, than listen, the, as many people do not know, but I did sign um, Lucas Body to a long-term deal. Um, and he's down here. And Cedric and myself are fighting in the 135 division between um, himself as well as Chan Thompson. And it, it, when was last time you were at a convention where two Canadian promoters are fighting over who should be in the ratings? Like, it, it's been a minute. Mm -hmm. That That's awesome, man. Um, Dan, there's so much things to talk about, Greg. Um, mm -hmm. Listen, you just dropped like a whole, like, complete bomb. So... When you let, let's 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 backtrack a few seconds, Woo! Yeah. <laughs> just slow down for a second. That shit took off like a helicopter way too fast. You you <laughs> promised me, you know, I'm at the convention, you promised me we do this interview in a certain amount of time. So no, we I got you, back. don't worry, we're gonna speed it up. I got you. So, listen, <laughs> um, you said petitioning, so you said fighters are petitioning. Um, what what fights are you petitioning for if you're able to talk about and and and, and how much other Canadian fighters are petitioning? Four positions. You don't have to tell me like who they're with. What? Just no. But listen, Lucas Body has the amateur pedigree as well as he's put in time in the pro ratings. Where I believe he is in one of the top fifteen in the world in that division. Um, Chan Thompson has taken some risks. He took the showbox fight, pulled the upside off, and also has fought for the NBA since then. So he also believes that, and rightfully so, should be in the ratings as well. So you have two Canadian fighters in the same division. And there's no reason why their promoters should should not have a little bit of animosity and not, not necessarily animosity, but more um, competitiveness to try and um, push their fighters in the best position as possible. Well, you know, they got a bit of history um, and a little bit of sparring. We don't get distracted with Jake Paul. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> he just came out. <laughs> He's doing everything he can for Serrano. He is. He, he definitely is. That's for sure. Um, when, when you talk about it, you have uh, Shannon's ranked number, if I'm not mistaken, 14 in the WBA ranking. Yes. Um, Lucas is not in the fifth top 15 according to the ranking. So that's where the fight comes in. At the same time, 
they've had a little bit of a history when it comes to sparring. We don't talk about sparring, but you know, there's a little bit of exchange between them. They're both willing to fight each other. Um, what do you think it will take to make that fight happen for something significant, maybe with the WBA? And we have it on home soil. Money, right? That's what makes the world go round, buddy. So we got to push the boxing economy to the level where these guys financially are rewarded to fight each other. And in the meantime, it's not worth their time. And that's up to me to do a better job to make sure that the economy is growing, that um, both of them keep growing as prospects. And we all know that hometown rivalry is the best. But it has to make sense. It just has to make sense. The The landscape has changed a lot. There's a lot of business beside it. So it has to financially make sense. And um, when it does, then it will definitely make a fight. I want to know, this is going to be a sixth fight this weekend. This Sunday is going to be a sixth fight of 2022. Um, what is your biggest takeaway from 2022? Obviously, not with the sixth one complete yet, but hindsight 20. Like, what is your biggest takeaway, would you say, of 2022 for the company and for yourself as a promoter? And he went out. Sorry, for the what? For the company and for yourself as a promoter. Just that COVID's in the rear view. Like, I think this year was very, um, it was difficult to, to make big commitments because there's just so much uncertainty in Canada. Like I think United States in certain parts they had it figured out where it was really in the rear, but Canada was just so uncertain. So I think now you, we've, we've put a few under our belt where 2023, we can actually map out a plan where we can stick to and not be gun shy, um, make big fights, uh, make competitive fights, make provincial rivalries. Like you got to remember like less than a year ago, every province was operating at a different speed. So it, it's hard. It's hard to say that we can make um, fights that are meaningful when it's a small pool of talent to pick from. And then when we do pick them, then you got to jump through a bunch of different hoops from legislation from each province. So, so given, given all that, that you just said so eloquently, how could you use all that and what would be the plan for Lee Back's promotion 2023? Like what is the what is the goal? What is the plan uh, for the for the for the company, for the promotion? The plan is to contact every promoter in that country and say, I got my racehorses, you got yours. Let's just find out who fucking runs fast. Like it's it it it, it there's no point in fooling ourselves and fooling the fighters and fooling the fans to believe that they're better than they are. Let's find out who's better. Let's find out who wins. And like you will win one day and I will win the next. But ultimately the fans win and the sports win. Um, I, I want to know on top of that, because that that that's big right there. The reason why I say that, because are you willing to overpay for some of these fights? I will pay accordingly. Because <laughs> you know the business, sometimes you got to overpay just a little no, bit. But sometimes right? people need to be humble. They got to know what they're worth. I'm not fooling no one. Like, give you an example. Like, give you an example, right? Walk with me a little bit. Okay, real yeah, quick. Shan is number 14 and you're trying to make a deal with Lucas is not there. Shan's going to say, say they, they're like, you know what, you got to, they, they want you to pay more than what you think you're, it's willing or it's worth to be paid for. Would you do it um, for the positioning? Like it, in terms of things like that, not that particular fight, but just in general, if you had to make no, a listen. position change. Well, when I look at, when I look at a guy like Chen, he's skilled, he's good. Where can he go on this globe and what can he be paid? Find out what that number is and make it make sense in your home city. I'm not going to throw darts at a wall and say, oh, you should be paid this and you deserve this. No, like if you deserve that, you would have got it already. You wouldn't have been fucking pitching me at it. You would have been paid for that. So maybe you think you deserve that, but what your real price is this. And this is what I will pay you and we'll do it at home where it makes more sense. If you can make it somewhere else, well, then go get it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, you have turned as i said fighters to making big money um it's safe to say correct me if i'm correct incorrect sorry 
Samuel Vargas was the cash cow of Lee Baxter promotions. Is that so safe? So I will say? say this. I'm not correcting you, but okay. I will advance to that statement. Sam Vargas did very well in the sport, but he did much better after he received his money. So it's not about how much he was paid for the fight. It was where he put that money. He was fortunate to be around myself and people around me that are very smart with money. And a lot of it rubbed off on him. So for someone that accomplished what he did in the sport and to have that much equity and, um, and leverage where he can say he can walk away from the sport because he does not need the sport to pay his bills is, is a huge um, accomplishment to myself. But now with that being said, um, he can, uh, yeah, like in, in terms of what was offered to him, and what was offered to the rest of Canada. Yeah, he's, he's done pretty well for himself, excluding um, Quebec. Quebec is obviously its own machine. The, the, reason why, the reason why I ask you that, because I want to know who is the cash cow, who's the face, would you say, of Lee Baxter Promotions right now? If you had to say, you know, somebody who's kind of, you know, the flag bearer kind of leading the way in terms of, uh, you know, the promotion when it comes to a fighter. Well, I would say right now we're more focusing on prospects instead of who the consistent large earner is and in terms of what I think Josh Lupia Josh Lupia can go so far man he can make big money he's got a big following he's got such a story man the guy was supposed to not have a leg <laughs> like they're supposed to amputate his leg and he's he's fighting Leonardo Tyner this weekend and yeah he's a little bit older but that mother, he's coming to win and I know he will run through that task like no other, and we'll just keep going up higher. You got like four more minutes, Lee. I'm watching the time. Uh, I got a few more questions for you. Um, these ones you can answer as you see fit, right? Um, how does the WBA convention help your business? How do going to these conventions help your, your promotional companies for those who know nothing about boxing promotion? It's just networking, man. It's like all the all the fancy bells and whistles don't really matter. It's just rubbing shoulders with people and just being able to have a familiar face that can get a deal done quicker because you have a relationship. So you got to come to these things. And if you don't come to them, you don't have a relationship. So when I pick up the phone, it's like you. If I called you and I never knew you or I called you like we have the relationship we have, there's just trust there. Like I can say, hey, let's do this. And you're down to do it. Whereas, like, it's the same yeah. with all these promoters and same with matchmakers and ratings members. You need to come to these things or you will not make progression. That's, that's, that's sick. That's it. And you know what? That's, that's important, you know, for people to know that these steps are necessary. You understand? Um, the next one I want to ask you is that in 2023, what titles are you trying to attain and for what fighters are you trying to attain them for? If you're able to forecast that for us. Well, I can't tell you who I have signed because <laughs> we're in negotiations, but that would world title in Toronto. Um, and then for the fighters that summertime? I can speak about. <laughs> summertime? Uh, probably fall or December. Okay. I, I know you want it to be summer, but... <laughs> It's not going to be a caravan of Sunday with a world title. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, Lucas Body, man. Lucas Body's going to be in the mix. Um, international titles, intercontinental titles, title eliminators. Um, there's a couple other people on the roster that will be one or two fights away. Um, they haven't been publicized yet. But, no, I, I've really been focusing on the new talent, guys that are 25 and under, guys that can – actually not just fight for a world title but win a world title and stay there and retain and unify and change divisions and that's that's why i want to do this i don't want to just do this to be a tourist like we want to bring boxing to toronto we don't want to just bring a toronto boxer over there to get paid i love it i got two final questions um mm. one one being i asked you them both together um one being um what is your take on the Ontario Commission's one tape, one gauze rule? Um, there are a lot of fighters who are getting their hands hurt very early on in their career. 
I want to know what your take is on that. And um, yeah, let's start with that. So unfortunately, um, things don't happen overnight. And as much as the people that are on the ground want the change and the people that could probably um, understand why it should change and they see the problems, um, we are a political province and the individuals that would make that decision probably actually don't even know what that decision would impact. Um, just takes time, man. It's, it's inevitable. It needs to be done for progression. Um, we all know it's not safe or, or else everywhere else around the world, fight towns, fight provinces or states would be doing it the way we do. And we're the only one that doesn't do it that way. So clearly we're behind the eight ball, but, um, I, I don't point fingers and blame it on our commission. I don't point fingers and blame it on our, um, years of how it was and it could never change no it just takes time and and you got to bark it up the right tree to the right person to turn around and say hey um this could actually make an impact um as much as we love to believe we're a big deal we're we're small fish right and and these people they they get an email about this they don't care it's not like hey we're selling out the sky dome and you got to make this change or this is not going to happen yeah. But it's up to guys like myself, guys like Tyler, guys like Dan, guys that have been doing this for a little bit to keep the pressure on and make the change happen. Final question. Can you give us the framework without obviously the numbers of the Lucas body contract? And then that's it for me. Multi-fight one year based on progression. I know I'll do my part. He will do his. So it will be a multi-year. So the first year is uh, how much fights we are you? What's minimum fights with the first year? Three, three, three. Maximum, um, twenty-three. I don't know. There is no maximum love in the sport, man. I love it. <laughs> Congratulations on the addition to the family, man. Um, all success and blessings to you. I told you, we man. We both looked at each other tonight and said, "We don't want to resent each other. We want to have fun, and this will be the project where we do everything right. We overturn every stone." And we will do this to the best of our ability to make a star. And I think he has everything he he needs to do that. It's just everyone's got to do their part. And if I do my part, then it's not a one-year deal. There you go. Greg, any final words? You were you. silent tonight, bro. Say Yo, something. I'm letting my guy Ask cook, man. Something. Yeah, I'll <laughs> see you on Sunday, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. Yeah, you already know, man, when I get to going, hey, I told you, man, 15 to 20, lock it in, baby. I'm always on time, man. You already know how it go. Listen, congratulations on addition to the family. Gregor Miller said he wants some smoke with your fighters. I don't know if you know who that is, but, you Who's know, that? I don't know, some some guy named Gregory Miller, Killer Miller. Where's he at? I think he fights oh, United. What weight you fight at, Miller? What weight you fight at? 175? You fight at always, bro. Yeah, you fight anyway. Scale don't work. Yeah, he wants some work, so. I guess reach out to reach out to Lee, man. Just Lee back to promotion and you know. email us. Mo bounce around. That guy has struggles to make weight. <laughs> Peace and <laughs> love, bro. Enjoy your time, baby. All right. Uh, See you guys. Yes. Bye. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, man. The head honcho. Yeah. Lee Baxter promotion. Mr. Lee Baxter himself out there trying to make some moves.